Hi. Uh, welcome to my channel Jabber Time. Today I'm going to go over two topics the substitution rule for indefinite integrals and the substitution rule for definite integral. The difference between indefinite and definite is when this one is in general and this one goes from A to B, usually we use a C constant for this, the constant of integration, and here we don't. Uh, we're going to go also uh, make some details about you know the chain rule and the substitution rule from differentiation pretty much the same concept so we'll take care of it here we go Substi substitution rule for indefinite integral this is the formula that you just saw f of g of x g prime of x dx will be called in short f the integral of f of u du just to make the writing less we're gonna call this whole thing inside u and this package right here will be actually du introduction let me give you a quick idea about what's going on and why do we need this rule in integration we know that the integral of cosine is sine x plus c to be on the safe side because it's indefinite and it doesn't have a to b to double check the derivative of sine x plus a constant will give you cosine however if you have sine to x plus c using the chain rule sine to x will give you cosine to x times 2 you have to go n after the 2x and find its derivative and of course this will go away so what does that mean it means that the integral of cosine 2x with the 2 up front or 2 with it will take you back to sine 2x plus c what about if you didn't have the 2 with it without the 2 the uh, integral of cosine 2x dx is not sine 2x 2x so just keep that in mind integral of cosine 2x is not going to be sine 2x there is something involved here and we kind of like showed you that the two should be in there let's give it a try or try half sine 2x take the derivative and we'll see what that will take us to sine 2x will give you cosine 2x with the chain rule another 2 shows up but I have half outside which is gonna cancel the 2 so I end up with cosine 2x which means the integral of cosine 2x is half sine 2x plus c so if you want to have this and you want to integrate cosine 2x, that will take you to half sine 2x. Kind of hard to remember those, but the chain rule will take care of things and will do it for you. Just something to keep in mind, you know, what's, what's going on. I called it introduction. So if you're confused a little bit here about what's happening, just wait and you'll see the flow clearly. How do you do the substitution rule? For definite integrals, when we have a and b, we have the following. Let me take you back. Sorry, I went too fast. Uh, in this case, when you have a to b and you change the language and you start using u instead of g of x, that's not going to stay a and b. You're going to go from g of a to g of b. I'm going to show you with some examples what do I mean by this. To integrate x plus 1 to the power 12, of course, one way to do it is you multiply x plus 1 times itself 12 times and you make it a polynomial of a 12th degree, then you integrate piece by piece. That's not going to be practical at all, so we need to use the substitution. Let u be called or a short name for x plus 1. 
the u dx will be just 1. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 1 is 0. I don't have to write plus 0. Or, differently, I could somehow think about cross multiply and say du equals dx. Okay, this is just like to get you started, change the language to make it easier to deal with. This is my problem. Same thing with the new language that I brought a different color black. It's going to look like this. This is u to the 12 and dx is the same as du I replace also dx with du and I should be fine looks like I'm repeating myself sorry for that you integrate with respect to you uh, sometimes I say you have to have some respect I kind of like the way they say it with respect to you imagine if you don't have respect to me just kidding sorry I mentioned last video or two videos that I do joke around a lot in classrooms sometimes when it's possible of course but this is what I have so are we done no not really uh, the reason why the problem was in red and in black I came up with new names or short names for my problem I should not leave my answer or it's not the right way to leave your answer in the u language you take it back to the x value u is x plus one take it back and you are fine let's check let's take this package and find its derivative how do you find the derivative of this well 13 comes down which is gonna take care of this 13 and you end up with 12 plus c is going to go away and that's the answer well this is my answer for the integral take it back it takes me back to here so yes this is the integral of this and the derivative of this sorry the integral of this is uh, this much and the derivative of this will take you back to x plus 1 to the 12 another example you could take the 3 out but let's leave it inside because we need it what do you think is you kind of uh, funny the way I say it but that's how people say it in calculus what is you uh, it's supposed to be like who are you or something like that I don't know uh, 3x plus 1 will be you and that's all about you not me anymore so you is 3x plus 1 you get me guys right this is like what we need to reduce in writing this is like the G of X apply the math du dx I'm going slow a little bit because it's probably maybe like a new concept that you have to be slow and careful enough till you hit enough examples and see it quick uh, trust me after calculus one when you do the substitution rule you don't use that much writing you just do it quick trust me it's so simple so the udx is 3 and if you cross multiply I get du equals 3dx And if I do even more, I don't have to, but because this is an example and notes at the same time, I could rewrite dx by itself, divide both sides by 3, and I get du over 3. Okay, let's move on. So here's my problem with a new language. This is going to be e to the u still dx in my way I'm taking my time as you could see 3 still there I'm gonna replace dx from here with du over 3 cancel the 3 I end up with that clean look which is e to the u 
du. All right. What's the integral of e to the x? Is e to the x. What is the integral of e to the u with respect to u? e to the u plus c because I don't have numbers here. Take it back because we cannot leave it with the name u. We have to take it back to the x value. And the answer is e to the 3x plus 1 plus the constant of integration. Hopefully I'm not going too fast here because sometimes I do because I feel like I have to and I need to. In this case, I'm slowing down. This is like notes fully detailed. As you could see, I'll give you a bonus. Since you're listening and paying attention, I'll give you a bonus. Here we go. Take a look. You see this right here? I could do it from here, but I could do it from here. I don't want to distract you. Let's just focus. Look at this right here. Look what I'm going to do. I moved the three here. Do you see it? That's this right here. So you don't have to divide and solve for dx. You don't have to. The three with the dx combined is actually the derivative of u as du by itself. And you move on from there. And that's it. I'll give you more as we go, but let's see some more examples. Here's another example. Integral of 2x multiplied by x to the second minus 1 to the power 99. Who is you? Or should I say, who are you? Who is you? Or what is you? You is going to be x to the second minus 1. The u dx will be 2x. Cross multiply. You know the math. You don't have to do that. You could just do it straightforward. The u will be 2x dx. Enough. As you can see, I'm reducing writing because you kind of like know what you're doing. Go back to the problem. And with less writing, and I'm writing u to the power 99. That's this right here. And I'm thinking about this with this combined. It's called du. You see it right here? Instead of writing more and more steps, think that this, if it gets moved here, and underlined with the 2x has a short name of du. All right. You know how to integrate this with respect to you, not respect to me, respect to you. You increase it by 1 and divide by the new exponent, which is like 100 times u to the power 100 plus c. Are we done? No. We take it back to the x value and we are done. Now, this example is not too bad and less writing. But what about this? Notice that they gave me x to the second minus 1 to the power 99 and the inside part which is called g of x or in short I called it u. The derivative of it with respect to x gave me the 2x and I do have that 2x. By crossing multiplying or leaving du by itself to replace the dx and 2x, it was ready, as you could see. What's interesting about substitution rule is sometimes they're not fully ready, but you still need a substitution rule. Imagine if you don't have the 2x right here, the whole package, you don't have it. How are you going to integrate this? Are you going to multiply by itself 99 times? If you think about this as a substitution rule, you're going to call it u. How are you going to manage? You don't have 2x in your way. You don't. But here's my point. Sometimes it's not perfect, but with some adjustments, you could do it. Here's a bonus. In case if you're missing the 2, you could put it in. If you're missing the 2x, you can't. You can't use substitution for it. So you have to use some other method or call a friend. So, if you stick a 2 in, you're changing the problem. Because you want to make it 
look good like this guy. But to balance it and keep the equal sign, I'm gonna multiply by half. I guess you agree with me that if I multiply by two and multiply by half, I'm kind of like multiplying by two over two, which is one. So that's the trick. Doing that, that will save you a lot of time. And you move on. Of course, this is not the same problem. So as you could see, I did not have the two. I'm bringing the two in green and I'm balancing it with a half outside. All right. Uh, this is a repeated one, so don't worry about it. Move on. Think about this as part with this as being called du. Just by thinking that way, all what you need to do is start think like this is u to the 99 becomes u to the power 100 divided by 100 plus some constant. Then I have the half multiplied by the whole package because the half is multiplied by the whole integral. So the half will be multiplied by c1. And you just call it C2, where C2 is C1 over 2. Now, this is like more detailed. Overall, in calculus, when we have things like that happening and changing the constant of integration to another one, then another one, we don't worry too much. We just at the end write C because there is a constant involved. We don't want to say C3 is two thirds of C1 and so on. We just write C. Uh, hopefully this bonus is not distracting or confusing you, but it has a lot of benefits. With more practice, you will see more. And let's take a look at some more examples. Here's a sine and cosine function. I'm going to ask you again, who is you? Not who are you? You think it's going to be sine or cosine? It's going to be sine. It's the one involved inside. So I could reach to the outside part. DU, kind of quickly, by itself, not calling it DU D theta, is cosine theta D theta. Now, here I have definite integral. So I have A and B. I have a start and end. This is the new game, and this is what we have. You're going from theta 1, which is 0, to theta 2, which is pi over 2. What does that mean? It means with the new language, because I'm changing the names, u1 comes from theta 1, plug in 0 for theta, sine 0 is 0, so u1 is 0. Let's see what's u2. Plug in pi over 2 in sine, in the u value, sine power over 2 is 1. So with this red, you change into a new log. You're not going to say I'm going from 0 to pi over 2. You're going to go from u1 to u2. If this is going to be called u to the second, and this right here will be du. So that's how it's going to look like. And this is more detailed of what we have. This is u to the second, this is together called du. Instead of zero, you're gonna write u1, which is zero. Instead of u2, you're gonna, or pi over two, you're gonna write u2, which is one. A cleaner look. You know how to integrate this with respect to u. That's gonna be u to the third over three from zero to one. Notice these guys are u's, they're not thetas, so I should be fine. Plug in 1, then plug in 0, kind of like f of p minus f of 0, and the answer is 1 third. I have a room here for another bonus, and here we go. Here's a bonus. I'm going to do the following this time. We get to this part. And I did this part for you. But this time I'm going to do it differently. Take a look. We have this. We agree on it, right? It's right there. Right there. But I did not write the numbers here. I did not write 0 to pi over 2. And I did not write 0 to 1. Neither. Integrate. I'm not worried about the C. Because I'm going to end up with no Cs. 
It's a definite integral, it's not indefinite. Take it back. U is sine, so it's sine cube over 3. Now you can just plug in the theta that you know. So you don't have to do this if you integrate and take it back. That's my bonus. Do the math and you end up with one third. Same answer. You could test it yourself. I'm trying to write less and focus on the concepts as you could see. Hopefully that was helpful. And this was a great semester with you guys. And I want to thank you for the support. And thank you for being patient because some days I was late uh, making the videos. But making those videos is not an easy task. It takes a lot of time to write those notes, clean up your notes. And as you can see, sometimes I make some tiny mistakes, but you know, it's fine. I don't want to re-record the whole video just because of that mistake. But I think we should be fine. And one more time, thank you for the semester and good luck on your final exam. Thank you. And we'll see you sometime on other videos. Coming semesters, I'm teaching in two weeks college algebra and calculus 3 and there is even more from the other place that I teach at uh, algebra integrated algebra 3 and stats so thank you and we'll see you next time thank you for watching if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time thank you